Close. So you are all here. Okay, very good. Well then let's, uh, it is just a few minutes after seven o'clock, so we will go ahead and get started. We will call the Johnson City Council meeting number 20-11 to order. Cindy, roll call please. Councilmember Coe. Councilmember Coe. I unmute. I'm here. Oh. What did you say? Here. Ready? Yep. Roca. Here. Next, I'm going to read the COVID-19 information statement due to the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with Governor Reynolds' March 19, 2020 proclamation, suspending the regulatory provisions of Iowa Code Section 21.8 and any other statute imposing a requirement to hold a public meeting or hearing, the City of Johnson will conduct meetings electronically with the public allowed to attend per instructions denoted on the meeting's particular agenda. Meeting minutes will continue to be posted per the City's normal course of business. Uh, with that, I want to welcome everyone that is attending the meeting this evening. Uh, Cindy, do we have anyone other than city council members uh, that have? Uh, it does not appear. And staff? No. Okay. If anybody joins us, please please let me know. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the agenda approval. Jim, do we have any changes to the agenda? Yes, we have one item, uh, count, or excuse me, um, uh, Supervisor Brownell was going to attend this evening to give us an update, but he is uh, asked to um, come at a later date. He has nothing to update us on. <laughs> we look forward to when he can visit with us because there's been a lot of activity and I know he's been at the center of uh, much of it, so. Um, Okay, we will remove that from the public communications. Any other changes to the agenda, Council? If not, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, moved, Cope. I second, Suresh. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Cindy, vote, please. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yep. Roca? Yes. Yes. The next item on the agenda is public comment, but Cindy, uh, you indicated that we have no uh, members of the public with us this evening. Is that still the case? That is still the case. Okay. So we will then move on to public hearings. We have two public hearings this evening. The first to conduct a public hearing and consider approval of resolution number 20-130, a resolution releasing and vacating of a public drainage easement within lot one and outlot W El Morado Estates, flat four. And who would this be? Uh, let's uh, call the meet. Uh, let's. Uh, why is it I can't do this remotely? <laughs> <laughs> we will. Uh, we will call the public hearing at seven o five. Who's going to handle this? Clayton will handle this. Okay, Clayton. This is a um, mainly a procedural item. Uh, there's an existing drainage easement on uh, the property that's to become El Morado Estates Plat 5. This is west of Northwest 100th Street, south of Hidden Valley Drive. Uh, you had approved a preliminary plat for this a couple months back um, involving the Shryock Dam, if you recall. Um, so this is uh, this easement vacation is going to allow for the development of infrastructure and future home construction. A new drainage easement will be granted with the final plat for uh, the development when, that, when you see that here in the coming months. Um, this easement uh, release is conditioned on them granting that new easement before we record it as final. And that is all I have on this matter. Okay. Does the council have any questions for Clayton? Hearing none, um, this is a public hearing. Uh, Cindy, do we have anyone on the on the uh, line that uh, 
might have an interest in commenting on this? No, ma'am. Okay. So with that then, we will close the public hearing at 7.06. We have a motion to approve resolution number 20-130. So move, Cope. Second, Evans. We have a motion and a second. Cindy, vote please. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Yep. Soroka? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Moving on into this, the uh, next public hearing. Public hearing to consider approval of resolution number 20-125, a resolution releasing and vacating a public utility easement within lot one, El Morado Estates Plat 4 and parcel 2017-56 of lot 10, El Morado, El Morado Estates Plat 2. And we will open this public hearing at 7.07. .07. This is Clayton again. Very good. Uh, similar to the last item, this is a procedural matter to clean up the, the land to allow for future development of homes and infrastructure. A new easement will be granted with the final plat for El Morado Estates Plat 5. Uh, this is also conditional granting of that easement before this uh, release is uh, recorded as final. That is all I have on this matter. Okay. Does council have any questions for Clayton? Cindy, I'm assuming that no members of the public have joined us? That is correct. Okay, we will close this public hearing then at 7.09. Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 20-125? So moved, Cope. Second, Martin. We have a motion and a second. Cindy, vote please. Councilmember Reddy? Yep. Soroka? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Motion passed. Moving on to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So I move. move. Right. Jim, you want to go? Okay. Okay. Evans moved. Yes. I, I second. Ready, seconds? Yeah. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Cindy, vote please. Council Member Soroka? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yep. Motion passed. Moving on to the non consent agenda. Consider resolution number 20 127, resolution renewing the fire department agreement between Grimes and Johnston. And Jim, is this you? It can be Jim Clark. Jim Clark, is this you? Uh, whichever Jim, we have a lot of Jims on the line. <laughs> Whatever Jim wants to take it. Yes, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so, as you remember, uh, a month ago at the first meeting in May, the Council did approve the renewal of the agreement between. Grimes and Johnston for uh, providing fire and EMS services. Since then, there's been a development in the fact that the state will allow us to operate under one license and do single billing. And so Grimes uh, modified the agreement before they signed it at their last meeting. And so that's why this is coming back to the council for uh, <clears throat> another resolution to approve the agreement and basically they struck the uh, article that took out or that they took out the article that was allowing for Grimes to deed over their ambulances to Johnston because at the time that was the only way we could figure out how to do single agency billing and make sure that the billing goes to, to both cities uh, in an equitable manner and so now that the state's going to allow us to do what we've been asking for over a year uh, they finally uh, agreed to let us do that. Just use one number, put the other number idle, and so we can do the single uh, source billing and then divide up the money evenly based on the zip code. So, Chief, I'm just curious, what action did the state take that authorized you to do that? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not really sure. I sent an email 
after the last meeting just to try one more time to see uh, Captain McAndrew had been working with them and they apologized for taking so long to get back to us and and saying, yeah, that makes sense. We'll just uh, use the Johnson number at this time, put the Grimes number, uh, the service authorization number, which is what we operate uh, off of for the state for our license. And so they said that they would put the one idle and we could just use the Johnson number for now. And then uh, we should be able to do all the billing as we have been trying to do for the last year. Any other questions, Council? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve resolution number 20 127? Don't Martin. <laughs> Cindy, did you get that? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Uh, Cindy, vote, please. That's my recall. Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Soroka? Yes. Moving on to item 8B, consider resolution 20 132, a resolution reimbursing Grimes for a portion of Deputy Chief salary. And I'm assuming this is uh, Chief Clark again? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as we discussed this at our last fire board meeting, uh, Johnson has been trying to uh, replace Deputy Chief position. Uh, Deputy Chief Michael Gentozzi resigned his position uh, back in early January. And because of the COVID and flight restrictions and that, we've narrowed our list of finalists down to three, but because of travel restrictions, we haven't been able to do our final interviews and replace that uh, vacancy. So in the spirit of sharing costs and trying to be fair, uh, the discussion was brought up at the fire board meeting about uh, since we only have one deputy chief at this time, does it make sense to help share those costs between Johnson and Grimes? And so that's what this resolution does. It's basically 25% of the salary and benefits for the year or half of this last six months that we've uh, been operating with one deputy chief. And so I know during the, the meeting, we had a discussion as to, well, if we only have one, do we only need one? And the answer to that is no. Uh, I do have a secession plan that somewhere in the future uh, when uh, Deputy Chief Shipper retires that I would be coming to both the uh, fire board and then both councils to ask to hire three more additional firefighters, move the current captains to a division chief role so that they would not tie to uh, an engine. They'd have a supervisor role. They would take some of the responsibilities from the deputy fire chief and then also hire a civilian uh, administrative assistant at that time. So split up those duties, share them. But right now there's several things that we're not able to get done just because we're down one person. So that's uh, some of the reasoning of why we're asking for the council to consider um, reimbursing grinds for the fact that they've been providing the deputy chief for the last uh, five months, but will be six months before we're able to get that position replaced. And Chief, just remind all of us, uh, just in terms of uh, what we can anticipate um, with kind of starting to get past COVID a little bit, uh, what, what is the plan for getting um, a Deputy Chief uh, uh, in Johnston here? Sure. So as soon as travel restrictions are eased, one of our top three candidates is actually overseas. He is a, currently a fire chief uh, for the military. Uh, he oversees the Marine fire bases in Japan, uh, <clears throat> Guam, and Hawaii. And because of the travel restrictions and the military is, uh, even though Japan is starting to ease their travel restrictions, it's up to the Department of Defense to allow him to travel to come over so that we can do live interviews. We've got two other candidates within the United States. Uh, so we've got three that we want to do an interview in person, um, invite our fire board and other department heads to sit in on those interviews. And so as soon as those restrictions are lifted then we plan to move forward with that process. Any other questions for the chief? If not, do we have a motion to approve resolution number 20-132? I move, Suresh. Second, Cope. We have a motion and a second. Cindy, vote please. Councilmember Evans? 
Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yep. Smoker? Yes. Hope? Yes. Motion pass. Moving on to the next item. Consider approval of claims in the amount of 31,670. Is that right? That is correct. No, oh, it's 31 million, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> I was waiting for you to be be wrong, be scared about it, and so I was all ready to say that's the right number. <laughs> it does. It, it 30, does take my breath away. That's why I was trying to reduce it. <laughs> Thirty-one million. That is correct. Yeah, thirty-one million six hundred and seventy thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars and eighty-six cents. Teresa, <laughs> why is it that so is hard? correct? That is our annual interest and in principal payments for all our debt. Lots of good projects are being paid for tonight. Yeah. Yes, they are. That is the uh, item. Any other questions from the council? Do we have a motion to approve the claims? Move approval, Cope. Second, Evans. We have a motion and a second. Cindy, vote, please. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Yep. Soroka? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Motion passed. Moving on to the administrator staff comments. We will have one listed uh, staff comment this evening, and that is Town Center updates. And is that, is that Jim or Adam? That would be, that would be me, uh, Mayor. Uh, this is Adam. Uh, Cindy, if you could pull up on that first attachment, please. Uh, we're just coming off of uh, a number of town center committee meetings in which we've been discussing some of the infrastructure changes within the town center. Um, Confluence, our landscape architect on the project, has put together an updated rendering for us just to be able to uh, share that out a little more accurately and, and talk through some of those changes. Uh, so working uh, quickly from the east to the west here, uh, you see the addition of the pump track, uh, which is labeled uh, G on the map there, uh, kind of winding through that trailhead area, uh, through some of those uh, detention areas, uh, which aren't anticipated to be uh, filled with water very frequently. Uh, so a nice new amenity uh, within that area. F is the, the orchard area there with the, uh, the apple trees and the cherry trees. Um, as you look over to E, that is just the label for the amphitheater. Uh, the various A sections on the south and the north are the areas in which we're delaying the pavements uh, due to uh, some delays in the commercial construction uh, because of COVID primarily. Uh, and then I'll also just note for you that final Northwest 63rd place property, um, we did extend a tentative offer uh, to that property owner uh, this morning and they accepted that. Uh, so we do anticipate being able to move forward with closing on that property subject to council approval uh, and some finalizing of that uh, purchase agreement. Uh, moving over to D, uh, you'll see that that uh, concrete pad there has been expanded in size in anticipation that it could be uh, better suited for fish or the ripples uh, art piece, which is still under discussion. The Arts Council will be meeting later this week uh, to go over some revised pricing for that. Uh, within B, uh, you'll see some additional concrete pavers kind of creating those angled crossways, which will be only visible in the summer uh, with an entrance on the northwest and the southeast section of that. Uh, and then sort of an L-shaped area um, just north of that angled section going over the road. That is a viewing area uh, during the ice skating season for parents and who not uh, to be able to sit on those benches there uh, and watch the kids skate. I'll also note that the splash pad, which we'll talk about in a little more detail here in a minute, um, is now designed in a way that uh, we can put that artificial ice over the entirety of it. So there won't be an interior railing uh, within that ice rink. It will just be one large sheet of ice. Uh, so between C and B there, you see that angled area. There's now a speed table there. Uh, looking at the increased traffic that would be between that concessions building and the ice rink as people carry the skates or potentially get a beverage or a snack and cross over to that patio in the summer or the ice rink in the winter. Uh, we wanted to put a little more focus on a pedestrian uh, crossing there and so there, that is a, a nice speed table there with some decorative concrete uh, to try to slow traffic down. Uh, there's still some discussion about maybe moving, removing another parking spot or two 
um, just north of the um, east side of that building, concession building, uh, to give a little bit better of a viewing platform for the mural that would be on the arts or be on the concession building. Uh, so Confluence is still working on that. Uh, the actual concession building itself hasn't changed since the uh, last council update. Uh, so we think we're in a good place with that. Uh, Cindy, if you wouldn't mind moving through kind of the next four attachments, which would all be the splash pad, uh, various renderings on that. Um, Confluence and, and the committee have also been working through um, a number of changes to that splash pad. Uh, so we now have six above ground features uh, with uh, some varying height of which those water will shoot out there. Um, and then uh, it adds up to 25 total features. So the other 19 features would be, again, various height ground features, uh, about half of those with some LED lighting built in there, trying to balance the uh, cost differential between having that nice lighting in the evening, um, but also seeing that that light's gonna splash out and really illuminate the rest of those uh, unlit, or directly unlit fountains as well. And then focusing that in the center so it'll draw a little attention to the art piece directly to the east of that. That will be foot sensor activation. We're working through some uh, specific details on how that foot sensor will work, making sure that's ADA accessible. Um, also looking at maybe a couple of those uh, got ground geysers also sort of being in a curved trajectory so that uh, kids can kind of interact a little bit more uh, with those running underneath them or dodging them. Um, but we are looking at a pretty nice uh, water feature there. Uh, it's a significant upgrade from sort of the original design. Uh, we also went through them the last, uh, so that's the overhead look there of, of the different lit features as well as all the splash pad. Uh, we also talked through uh, the cost implications of this. Uh, it has not been bid out um, and it should have been various degrees of trying to price out the changes here, uh, but the removal of the, uh, the real ice accounted for about 1.25 million in cost reduction. Um, most of those savings were spent to do upgrades to the concessions building, creating that bathroom and the interior finishings for uh, the concession uh, space within that and some of the piping and the HVAC systems, um, purchasing of that synthetic ice uh, and then the improvements to the splash pad. Uh, however, we're projecting between $100,000 and $200,000 in savings after that. Um, and building material costs and between 200 and 250,000 in savings from not having to purchase the restroom trailer, the concession trailer, the Zamboni equipment and some other odds and ends. So uh, the committee was pretty happy, I think, with where the direction of this was. Uh, we are working towards finalizing some of those final details that I mentioned um, and getting those uh, updated cost estimates so we know exactly what our final cost is going to be on that, uh, but looking at somewhere between three uh, and $450,000 savings uh, by going through these changes. Um, the City Hall feature wall is also subject of conversation. Uh, and Cindy, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the one that's called Image Wall Concept Updated or the one directly after that. Uh, I, I think I'll maybe, unless there's questions, I won't talk through each of these individually, um, but invite council members if you're curious to kind of look through the different topics that are on here. The left one being the, uh, the aerial map of Johnston directly on the wood. Uh, and then the right one uh, being those plexiglass panels that'll be more uh, replaceable. Uh, it can be changed over time. Uh, but we have identified different topics uh, for each of those little plexiglass panels with some history and some key uh, components of our community. Uh, we haven't put the specific verbiage in there that just went in front of the committee uh, last week, uh, but we're working on getting that text in place. Uh, but if you feel like we're off base on any of those or there's a, a topic that's being missed, uh, shoot me an email or, or comment after this, I guess, and, and we'll try to work to incorporate that. Adam, just real quick, where, where will those plexiglass pieces be? In, in this uh, when walk in, uh, yeah, when you walk into the lobby, on the left will be the uh, two administration reception areas. And then sort of in the center there, um, on the right will be those two boards. I have just one comment on this. Um, I just want to say, I really love that the Statue of Liberty soldier picture from Camp Dodge was included in there. That's one of my favorite old time Johnston photos. So thank you to whoever put it in there, architects or you or whoever. Oh, great. That is a that's a classic one. We'll try to make sure that one stays in there. 
Uh, other than that, I think construction is continuing to move along. Uh, some of these changes, it sounds like, are going to push us back a little bit on the completion date, and maybe Dave can fill in any gaps in my knowledge here, uh, but looking at maybe a month or two uh, set back behind that, uh, but we will be uh, working on a little bit of landscaping changes and removal of that fence up on Northwest 63rd uh, due to the potential acquisition there. Uh, so a couple of final changes being done on that part as well. And that's, uh, that's the concession building that uh, Cindy's pulled up there. Again, no changes since the last uh, council meeting on that. Uh, with that, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if I can. Also, have any questions? Looks good, Adam. I like the water feature. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, thank you. Okay, back to the agenda. We are still under city administrator staff comments. Uh, Jim, do you have anything? Yes, I actually I've got several things I want to cover this evening um, uh, for the council. First of all, um, as you're aware, we had a, a storm event that occurred on, on May 25th. And um, I, I want to recognize our staff and their quick response after that event went through our community. Basically, the EF1 tornado went from approximately Terra Park to Dewey Park. And, um, you know, immediately following the event, I did get reports from uh, public works, they went out and, and cleared the streets so that uh, cars would be able to continue to pass with the idea that we do the more of the storm cleanup on the next day. But uh, they were out there very quickly assessing the storm damage, determining what uh, we needed to do to, to assist with, with whatever cleanup. Along with that, the um, Parks Department was involved, as well as the um, uh, police and fire. And I, the reports from the initial reports is that there were no serious injuries or no injuries related to the storm, which was a good thing to, to hear. Um, but I, I know our staff um, responded very quickly, did what they could do to, to get things um, cleaned up as much as they could for the neighbors. And then the park and public work staff on the next day went through and cleared up a, a lot of the debris. We are having a, a allowing residents to put debris on the curb for a special pickup tomorrow. With this particular storm, it wasn't an event that we had damage all over the city. It was very defined, a 50 to 100 yard swath um, you know, between Terra Park and, and Dewey Park. So uh, again, I just wanna recognize our staff and, and the quick response and, and uh, you know, getting things taken care of for our citizens, a job well done. Uh, somewhat related to that, we know we had some issues with our storm sirens. Uh, that we came, became aware of uh, with the storm event. The, um, uh, several of the sirens did not work. Um, and part of the, the reason was four sirens were replaced just the week before. And although we tested the sirens to make sure that they were uh, operating, um, one of the issues, what really happened that evening is that there were some uh, factory installed um, uh, signals that um, are, um, uh, I'm losing the word, but there's a, um, the signal that comes from the, the, the sheriff's department to the, to the storm, outdoor storm sirens uh, did not work properly or did not communicate with the sirens. And, and uh, again, there were, there was, those were factory installed um, uh, with the storm happening that evening. Uh, we found out that they weren't working very quickly. Uh, Public Works uh, got a hold of the uh, manufacturer and began working on finding what, out what the problem was. And, and within a, a day or so, we, the problems were uh, corrected. We also had one storm siren, outdoor storm siren that was hit by lightning. So there were a couple of different things that happened um, after they were able to, to figure out the um, communication issue between the sheriff's department and, and the signals and, and uh, uh, fixing the one that got hit by lightning. We tested them, uh, I believe on Wednesday and, and everything worked. Um, and so, um, so the good news is there. Those storm sirens, as you're probably aware, I mean, they're tested every Saturday morning, every first Saturday of the month at noon. And um, uh, when they were tested in early May, uh, that was at the time that the old sirens were there. And so we didn't get any reports that sirens were not working, but sometime between that test and the storm on the 25th, um, one of the signals was hit by 
one of the sirens was hit by lightning and then um, the other ones were, the quite part of them were replaced and, and we found out the problem with the, uh, the factory installed um, code that was put into the, the sirens. So um, just wanted to make sure the council's aware that the sirens are now um, operational and um, let's see, this is the first Saturday, so they should be tested tested at noon again, so, or noon this Saturday. So um, that's uh, an update on the storm. Any questions or comments related to the storm? Jim, this is Matt. We will be out uh, with staff at each siren uh, again this Saturday to uh, check them again to make sure they're operational. Okay, thank you, Matt. Another item, uh, yeah, just... Oh, I can just add, I was going to say under my comments, but um, I just want to thank the staff. Thank you. Thank, thank Matt and thank everyone else for responding very quickly to that situation. Uh, I received some calls from constituents just wanting to know uh, what our plans were. And, and uh, um, you know, I, I think that we did the right thing uh, in providing that assistance to the um, residents of our community who were impacted uh, by by the tornado. Uh, even though it wasn't a widespread storm, those that were hit were hit hard and, uh, you know, sustained some pretty significant tree damage. You know, the good news is there was no loss of life. There was very little structural damage. Uh, if you're going to have a tornado, that's the kind of tornado you want. Uh, again, I just want to thank uh, you, Jim, and, and uh, Matt, and, and everyone else who uh, responded quickly and, and effectively uh, in, in a a very serious situation. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, Jim, um, before, you, Jim yes. before you go on real quick, is it possible, could you guys just send out us a map with where all those sirens are located? Sure. That'd be yeah, I can, I can send that out to you. Okay, thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Just so we do, we have eight around town. Um, so yes, we can get that map out to you. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next item I wanted to mention, uh, we I sent this, this this afternoon the update on our reopening of City Hall in response to the COVID shuts, shutdowns. Um, the, uh, so you should have it in your inbox if you haven't seen it yet, but uh, we are following through with the plan as we laid out to the mayor and council, I believe at our last meeting and have talked about for longer than that. But um, uh, the city is continuing to move through our reopening plan and we're on track. At this point, I don't think there's been any major setbacks or anything where we said, oh, wait a minute, we need to really uh, think through that or do something different. So, um, but the plan is being implemented and we color coded it so you can see what's been done and then what, uh, what it has left to be done. So please take a look at that. If you have any questions, feel free to get back to me and we can talk through that. The, um, wanted just to mention last, at the last council meeting, the council approved a, uh, contract for kayak rentals that um, uh, on um, uh, Beaver Creek and uh, that since actually this week was moved, moved to uh, Terra Park. Um, I will say I went by uh, when they were at Beaver Creek that first weekend, that was Memorial weekend, and uh, w what was very encouraging is the, um, the, the kayak rental folks, I think on Saturday they had five kayaks that they rented, but they told me there was probably at least 40 people that had brought their own kayaks and, and were um, uh, going down Beaver Creek, which I think was fantastic um, and, and uh, just a good response. I think there's a lot of people um, using that facility. Um, then this week, because of the storms that we had uh, last week and that, the um, uh, issues with Beaver Creek as far as um, uh, being pretty full and, and it just isn't a, a, a safe situation for kayakers to use it at this point. They did move over to Terra Park. And from my understanding, they had about 30 rentals each day at Terra Park. So um, very popular, obviously, and, and uh, our citizens are responding and, and uh, uh, getting out there and using some of our uh, water uh, assets that we have for them to use. So I think that's very, very encouraging and just fun to see the, the community responding to that. Um, one other uh, item that I, I mean, the last few nights, um, I know that uh, um, the mayor and council, uh, we've been trying to keep you as updated as we can about our efforts, particularly with the law enforcement and, and responding to the 
um, the issues that have happened in downtown Des Moines and last night uh, out at Merle Hay Mall. Um, and that's, uh, everybody's still on heightened alert. And so that's part of why um, Chief uh, McDaniel wasn't able to attend this evening, but uh, uh, our police department has done a, a, a fantastic job in supporting um, the departments from around the metro area. And it really shows how our groups um, from all the communities work together and, and come together when there's a, a major issue that they have to deal with. So I, I wanna make sure that we recognize our, our law enforcement officials um, uh, for a job well done and continuing to be worked on. So there'll be more to report after, um, after the next few days and we see what, uh, what response there is with the community. So, but they've done a fantastic job and, and Chief McDaniel has, has uh, communicated with me and I've shared most of that information with the city council. So uh, things are, uh, they're doing a great job in responding to the, to the issues. Um, the, uh, just one other thing, I, I wanna recognize uh, Teresa and Cindy. Um, they're a part of a group of, um, of um, human resource uh, folks in the metro area from other communities, particularly um, I believe it's Urbandale, Ankeny, and Johnston work together to, on a uh, project where they um, are doing joint testing for firefighters. We all need firefighters, and instead of each community doing that testing on their own, the communities have gotten together under the leadership of, of Cindy and Teresa and others from those other communities. And so they're jo doing joint testing. That way, firefighter, people that want to join firefighting, they don't have to go and take three different tests in three different communities. Um, and then also DMAC is, is helped by um, uh, providing uh, physical and agility tests uh, for those. Um, well, they, uh, yeah, they do the testing center and then a physical agility test. So um, they're, um, uh, they got recognized by the Impelra, which um, uh, is the um, national organization that deals with uh, human resources and they got what is called a pace setter award. So we're very um, uh, happy and, and wanted to make sure Cindy and, and Teresa were recognized for their efforts there. And it's just a good example, again, of the Metro working together to make um, uh, our resources go further and, and provide better service to our citizens. And um, that's all I had this evening. That was a lot. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to city council comments, Councilman Cole. Uh, Jim, I just I, I, I just want to, if you could pass along our thanks to Chief McDaniel for his and the whole police force for all their amazing work on this. These are this is uh, you know really one of the most challenging issues that um, any city and local governments face, and and. I think the police forces here in the in the central Iowa area have responded very well, very appropriately, um, and handled the situation very professionally. And I'm really proud of not only the work of our officers, but the cooperation that they've shown, and really the proud of the, the officers from all over the, uh, the metro area. I think it's been really good. So, if you could pass that on, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll send them a note as well. But just want to pass it on. The other thing, I just kind of wanted to note today was the first day, and I think probably. Uh, several weeks in which Johnston was not in essence state capital north where Governor Reynolds was not uh, operating out of um, um, and not only Governor Reynolds but also several other key state officials operating out of the, uh, the facility at the at Camp Dodge so anyway I think at some point we should kind of recognize um, you know there's a lot of folks spent a lot of time here in Johnston um, and Johnston sort of became this de facto state capital of Iowa for several weeks and so <laughs> like think about maybe recognizing that in some way. And finally, J Jim, on the kayak thing, uh, uh, we did, my daughter and her, one of her friends did rent a kayak this weekend at Terra Park, and it worked out great. They really enjoyed it. So I would encourage, um, I, know, I know it's kind of a short-term thing after the, um, because of the high water at Beaver Creek, but I do think Terra, you know, I, I went, while they were, out, they were kayaking, I went and fished a little bit. I was a little nervous that maybe there'd be so many kayakers that you know it would disrupt the fishing, but that 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 didn't happen at all. Um, it was it worked out really well. So just wanted to pass that along. So, well, thank you, Tom, and I appreciate those comments. And we'll make sure we follow up on the two items you mentioned. Councilmember uh, Reddy. 
Uh, yes, I like to echo what Dr. Council Member Tom Cobb said about Chief McDaniel. So please say thank you to him for all the stuff that he has done to keep our city safe. Appreciate that. And also to Matt, I appreciate what you did during the uh, storm that we had. Thanks for cleaning up the roads and making sure the city runs smoothly. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Evans. I want to add on to the first thank yous and then, <laughs> and then add one more to Matt for, uh, I called Matt about a sinkhole that was forming on Merle Hay and in no time the, the maintenance guys were on it, had it cut open and replaced, did a beautiful job and I just wanted to say thank you for that. Great. Thank you. Councilperson uh, Martin. Uh, yes, um, ditto on all the thanks. I really appreciate the professionalism of our uh, police chief and the and the quick action of our public works committee. I will I will make one comment too about the kayaking. My husband was one of the groups that did rent kayaks on that Saturday when it was um, when it was available, and one of their group did fall out of the kayak and then kind of got a little bit into trouble with one of the snags. Uh, the current was quite strong and she she felt she was on, in a, a precarious situation. So I don't know if John Smith is on the line, but at one time we were going to clean up some snags, but because of COVID, I think it was that we didn't get to them. Can I get some clarity on that? And if he's not, we I just have him let me know later. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Yeah. Um, we had the Conservation Corps of Iowa, Minnesota reserved for the first two weeks of May. Um, but as you indicated, because of COVID-19, um, they were not able to hire their staff. Uh, the work that they typically perform is in close proximity to each other. Um, so it was determined at that time that they were not able to bring together their staff. They are hoping sometime in July that they'll bring the staff together. Uh, we are still on their agenda, so sometime in July or August, they're hoping that they'll be able to make it over to us. Okay, thank you. Is that it? Yes. Con uh, Councilman Soroka. Uh, just plus one and the thanks from everyone else, but otherwise nothing here. Okay. Um, I add my thanks to every, uh, every, everything else that's been said as well. Um, Councilman Cope, Governor Reynolds actually was in Johnston today, not not in person. We could extend the uh, extend our days in a row that. Uh... But she was on the big screen out at Camp Dodge. There was a. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent off this morning of uh, one of our cavalry units and, and uh, I was there to speak uh, on behalf of the city of Johnson, but the governor did speak on the big sc uh, screen um, as well. So, you know, when I was out there this morning, you know, we've really been through a lot in the last couple of months, you know, whether it's COVID-19 or the tornado or the, you know, the rioting and the threats uh, that are involved in that. When I was chatting with some of these soldiers out there this morning, <clears throat> It was suggested about the only thing that's left for us to experience um, is flooding, you know, major flooding in our <laughs> that could cause real problems for. I know, I know. But, um, you know, the good news is we don't expect a lot of rain this week. In fact, we probably are going to get just the opposite of a lot of rain this week. So, but that's still out there and that still could be a. Uh, could be something else that we have to deal with at the same time that we're dealing with uh, all of the other stuff. But again, it just shows, you know, what incredible staff we have that, you know, you can pile one challenge on top of another challenge upon an, uh, top of another challenge. And, you know, they're, they, they get through it. They, um, you know, they do what needs to be done and they do it well. And, uh, you know, Johnston is strong because of it. So again, thanks. Thanks to everyone, council members, uh, as well as staff and, and, uh, you know, all the other support that we have in the community. The residents, you know, we've got an incredible uh, community of residents. So, you know, we, uh, we, 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 uh, we, we know what we need to do when we have to do it and we do it well. So good job. 
Any uh, anything else for the good of the order? Okay, so it is seven forty six. I call that a short meeting. Finally, <laughs> there's nothing more to add. Uh, we are adjourned. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guys. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Don't forget to close your doors at nine o'clock. Don't forget to vote tomorrow. Don't forget to vote if you haven't already. Yeah. Thanks all. <laughs>